بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Our lecture today is about the leaf nodes of the head and neck. We defined the leaf nodes. What are these leaf nodes? The leaf nodes are an oval bean shaped, bean shaped like habit al fasulia or lubia structures throughout the body along the limb vessels. There are about 800 lymph nodes in the body. And some said that 600, others said 450. But as I know, there are about 800 lymph nodes in the body. 300 of them are in the head and neck. 150 on one side and 150 on the other side. So in the head and neck, there are about 300 lymph nodes. The lymph node is usually between 1 millimeter to 25 millimeter in length. So some of them are very, very small, just 1 millimeter, and other are bigger, two and up to 2.5 centimeter. Some of the lymph nodes are superficial, others are deeply situated. Some of them are superficial that you can palpate it. Some of the lymph nodes, which are superficial in the neck, if you put your fingers on your neck, anteriorly and on lateral, behind the ear, sometimes you can feel some of the superficial lymph nodes. What are the functions of these lymph nodes? Why we have these lymph nodes? The main function of the lymph nodes in all the body, not only in the head and neck, in all the body, is filtration of lymph fluid. So we have filter the lymph to trap the spot the foreign organisms, any foreign organisms that can enter, you know, this lymphatic system and lymphatic nodes are a defense mechanism. After the skin, the skin of the human being is the first line of defense. The second line of defense against pathologic organisms against bacteria and viruses are the sympathetic lymphatic system and here we have the lymph nodes so its functions is filtration of lymph fluid to trap foreign organisms like bacteria viruses cell debris and tumor cells suppose that there is some tumor malignancy سرطان في الجلد مثلا أو في اللسان أو في عظم الفك مثلا تنتقل الخلايا عن طريق الأوعية اللمفاوية الخلايا السرطانية فيبدأ هنا دور أو وظيفة الليف نود it catch these tumor cells and prevent it from progressing to uh, pass through the lymphatic vessels. فهي مثل محطة سيطرة يعني عقد اللمفاوية عبارة عن محطات سيطرة سيطر على الأجسام الوريبة سيطر على الخلايا المريضة سيطر على الخلايا السرطانية تمسك بمكانه وتصطاد بها المكان. The other function of the lymph nodes they help activate the immune system. جزء من جهاز المناعة اللي يحصن جسمنا وتنشيط جهاز المناعة هو عن طريق العقد اللمفاوية. Here we have simple picture showing the structure of these lymph nodes. This of course a micro 
scopical anatomy not macroscopical anatomy this is a microscopical anatomy showing the structure of the leaf node you see these leaf nodes contain from outside we have the capsule وما يطلق عليها المحفظة and the cortex القشرة and the medulla اللب لب العقدة اللمفاوية and these bezels this and this and this and this these bezels bring the lymph to inside the lymph nodes you see bring the lymph from the tissue And these vessels, you have, uh, you see that it contains valves that say, what's the benefit of this valve? That say that the lymph passed from here, from outside, from the surrounding tissue to inside the lymph node, but it cannot uh, come out through this vessel. So all the lymph from the surrounding tissue, from here and from here and through this vessel, through the vessels, enter the lymph nodes. In order to, to be infiltrated and to trap the organisms, the foreign bodies, the viruses, the uh, bacteria. So these vessels, because it brings the lymphs towards the lymph nodes, are called efferent vessels. These are called efferent. Efferent in A. This means that the, the, the lymph pass from the tissue to the lymph node. And after infiltration and the lymph node take its function with this lymph, the lymph will exit or leave the lymph node through a single vessel. Each lymph node, lymph node has a single leaving vessel, leaves the lymph node, and this is called efferent lymph vesicle efferent lymphatic vessels and also you see it contains multiple valves here valve here valve so the lymph came out come out from the lymph node in this to continue and of course later on as we will talk in the last in the in the end of the at the end of the lecture this uh, lymph will return to the circulation to the blood to the venous of blood and then to the heart and the circle will be completed also this lymph nodes has an artery small artery and vein supply this and forming this network of capillaries blood capillaries around the lymphatic nodules these lymphatic nodules within the cortex this is the cortex and the blood vessels form a network of capillaries around these lymphatic nodule so this is the structure of the lymph from this structure in the body we have up to 800 of these lymph nodes and in the head and neck we have about 300 lymph nodes and as I said 150 on one side and 150 on the other side now we'll talk about the classification of nodes in the head and neck. The lymph nodes in the head and neck region can be grouped into two main groups. We have the superficial nodes and we have the deep nodes. The superficial nodes and the deep nodes. Well, this photo will show you some of these superficial and deep nodes here we have the facial nodes or buccal nodes here this is the parotid gland in relation to the parotid glands we have also uh, lymphatic or lymph nodes and here we have the submandibular and here we have the submental and the anterior jugular and the deep cervical lymph node and here we have the mastoid in relation to the mastoid uh, uh, sorry mastoid is mastoid process and also here we have the occipital in relation to the occipital bone 
we will discuss each of these leaf nodes Uh, now, so we will start with the superficial cervical lymph nodes. The superficial cervical lymph nodes form a circle. It forms a circle, it's like a circle surrounding the head and neck. So the superficial circle of cervical lymph nodes is made up of the following groups. This circle of leaf nodes involve the about eight groups of lymph nodes. The first group is called the submental lymph nodes. العقد اللمفاوية تحت الذقن. Second group submandibular lymph nodes. عقد اللمفاوية تحت الفك. And the third is the buccal and mandibular nodes. Fourth, the parotid lymph nodes, and these parotid lymph nodes are two groups, superficial and deep. Fifth, we have the mastoid, which is also called post-auricular lymph nodes, behind the auricle. Sixth, we have the occipital lymph nodes. Seventh, we have the anterior cervical lymph nodes anterior cervical lymph nodes in front of the neck just superficial in front of the neck and we have the superficial cervical lymph nodes these also uh, at the sides of the neck they present also belong to the superficial group of lymph nodes all this picture show you the superficial group of lymph nodes here we have the facial or uh, buccal. This is facial, this is buccal. And we have the mastoid, there is the mastoid bone. And we have the occipital. And we have the submandibular. And we have the submental. And anterior cervical nodes. This uh, the anterior aspect of the neck is called anterior cervical nodes. And also, here we have superficial cervical nodes also on the sides of the neck. So these are the superficial group of lymph nodes of the head and neck. Now we'll talk about each one of these group of lymph nodes and where it is present exactly. Starting with the submental lymph nodes, these are three or four nodes situated between the anterior bilies of the digastric muscle below the chin in the submental triangle. And it's easy for you to remember this triangle between the anterior two bilies of the digastric muscles. The afferent here, the afferent, that is say, the vessels, the lymphatic vessels that come to the lymph node. The afferent drain the central portion of the lower lip and the floor of the mouth and the apex of the tongue. So the submental lymph nodes drain the central portion of the lower lip and the floor of the mouth and the apex of the tongue. Their afferent, that is say, the lymphatic vessels that leave these submental lymph nodes where it passes, the, the efferent pass partly to the submandibular lymph nodes, which is in close proximity with it, and partly to the nodes of the deep cervical group situated in the internal jugular at, on the internal jugular vein at the level of the cricoid cartilage. So the efferent lymphatic vessels of the submental lymph nodes are either passed to the submandibular lymph nodes or passed directly to the deep cervical group of lymph nodes which is situated along the internal jugular vein at the level of the cricoid cartilage. The second 
group of lymph nodes are the submandibular lymph nodes. And these nodes are usually three to six in numbers and situated in the submandibular triangle. And you know where the submandibular triangle, which is also called the diagastic triangle, that say between the anterior and posterior belly of the diagastic muscle. In contact with the surface of the submandibular salivary gland and within it is substance. Actually, sometimes when we have infection of this submandibular leaf nodes, we cannot differentiate between or whether that this is the lymph node or submandibular salivary gland infection. Because these uh, lymph nodes are in close proximity within the surface or on the surface of submandibular salivary glands, and sometimes these lymph nodes are within within the tissue or within the structures of the submandibular salivary gland. So when there is a problem within the salivary glands, submandibular gland, like obstruction of the duct of salivary glands, or like infection of the salivary glands which is called sialoadenitis. Infection of salivary gland is called sialoadenitis. This infection will cause swelling in the submandibular region and on examining of this submandibular region, sometimes we cannot differentiate whether this swelling مقدر مميز فيما إذا كان هذا التورم هو نتيجة تورم في العقد اللمفاوية أم نتيجة تورم في الغدة اللعابية تحت الفك لأنه هذه العقد تكون مرات داخل نسيج الغدة اللعابية اللي تحت الفك. The efferent, let's say, the vessels that come to the drain the tissue and come to, the, to these submandibular lymph nodes, the efferents of the submandibular lymph nodes drain the medial canthus. Medial canthus, which is that part on the medial side of the eye, or orbital cavity, or the eye, which is called the medial canthus, the cheek, الخط, the side of the nose, جانب الأنف, the upper lip, شف العليا, the lateral part of the lower lip, the lateral part of the lower lip. Don't forget, when the central part of the lower lip is drained to the uh, submental lymph nodes. So the lateral part of the lower lip, the lymph drain uh, to the lymph drain is to the submandibular salivary glands. Uh, the gums and the anterior part of the margin of the tongue. The anterior part of the margin of the tongue. Efferent lymph vessels from the facial and submental lymph nodes also enter the submandibular lymph nodes. And in a adna efferent min lymph node mumkin yitkhal يصير يعتبر أفرنت بالحالة هذه يدخل وين للصب مانديبيدور سيلفيري جلانس فعدنا هنا مثلا عدنا الفيشيال لينف نوز والصب منتل لينف نوز الأفرنت مالتا راح تعتبر أفرنت للصب مانديبيدور لينف نوز يعني هنا يصير عدنا فلتريشن انفلتريشن يصير عدنا فلتريشن مرتين يصير عدنا مرة بالفيشيال أند Submental lymph nodes and penetration of the other will be where? In the submandibular lymph nodes. They are efferent. The lymph vessels that leave the submandibular lymph nodes will pass to the superior deep cervical lymph nodes. We will explain it later. The other lymph nodes 
are the buccal lymph nodes. From its name, it is related to the vaccinator muscle. The buccal nodes lie or lies on the vaccinator muscle opposite the ankle of the mouth. Their afferent vessels drain the eyelids, the lymph from the eyelids, the conjunctiva, conjunctiva, uh, which is an nankeratonized stratified sequamous epithelium lining the eyeball and the skin and the mucous membrane of the nose and cheek. So these areas from the head, the eyelids, the conjunctiva, and the skin and the mucous membrane of the nose and cheek, the efferent lymphatic vessels from this area would go to the buccal lymph nodes. And the efferent lymphatic vessels pass from this buccal lymph nodes, pass to the submandibular lymph nodes. Now, the mandibular lymph nodes. We have one or two lymph nodes, the mandibular node, at the lower border of the mandible, near the anterior inferior ankle of the master muscle, in a close relation to the mandibular branch of the facial nerve. Usually it is one lymph node, which is called mandibular lymph node. But its importance is in a close relation to the mandibular branch of the facial nerve. You know the five branches of the facial nerve? We have the temporal, the zygomatic, the buccal, the mandibular, and the marginal mandibular, and the cervical branch. So non-mandibular branch of the facial nerve, with it, in, 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 in a close proximity with this nerve, we have the mandibular lymph node. Its efferent vessels drain to the submandibular lymph nodes. Of course, his coolish, يعني هنا, the lymph nodes is uh, in a close, uh, at the lower part of the mandible, it is very near to the submandibular lymph nodes. So the efferent from this mandibular lymph node will pass to the submandibular lymph nodes. The parotid lymph nodes, parotid lymph nodes, we have the, these are superficial and deep. And also including uh, uh, another يعني, group of uh, lymph nodes, which is called the preauricular. So the superficial and deep preauricular, all of these are called the parotid lymph nodes because, of course, it is related to the parotid gland. The parotid lymph nodes lie partly in the superficial fascia and partly deep to the fascia over the parotid gland. So it is called parotid lymph nodes. Their efferent, sorry, their efferent vessels drain the side of the scalp, the lateral surface of the auricle, the external acoustic meatus, the middle ear, the parotid gland itself, the upper part of the cheek, parts of the eyelids, the orbit, the nasal part of the pharynx, and the posterior parts of the nasal cavities. So, the lymphatic drainage from all these areas will pass to the parotid lymph nodes. Their efferent pass to the superior deep cervical lymph nodes. The other lymph nodes are the mastoid lymph nodes. Also from it is name, these lymph nodes related to the mastoid, in the area of the mastoid bone. And this includes the retroauricular, it is also called, sorry, also called the retroauricular because it is behind the auricle or posterior auricular. So, 
these lymph nodes lies on the mastoid process superficial to the sternocleidomastoid muscle and deep to the auricularis posterior superficial to the sternocleidomastoid muscle and deep to the auricularis posterior auricularis posterior which is one of the muscles of facial expression as you know we have the auricularis posterior we have auricularis anterior and auricularis superior or superior auricularis posterior and uh, anterior auricularis these three muscles are, uh, belong to the auricle and they are considered one of the muscles of the facial expression so the mastoid lymph nodes lie deep to the auricularis posterior muscle their efferent vessels drain the strip of scalp just above and behind the auricle the upper half of the medial surface and margin of the auricle and the posterior wall of the external of caustic meatus their afferent vessels drain to superior deep cervical lymph nodes the occipital lymph nodes these nodes are located in the back of the head near the occipital bone of the skull it lies at the apex of the posterior triangle superficial to the attachment of trabezius muscle now the posterior triangle of the neck its apex is toward the mastoid bone between the anteriorly between the sternocleidomastoid muscle and posteriorly we have the trapezius muscle so at the apex of this posterior uh, triangle we have the occipital lymph nodes and they are superficial to the attachment of the trapezius muscle their afferent vessels drain the occipital region of the skull of course the scalp yeah the skin or the scalp over the occipital region of the skull and their efferent vessels drain to the superior deep cervical lymph nodes you see all these lymph nodes or fission lymph nodes they drain to the deep, superior deep cervical lymph nodes all of them now we finished the superficial cervical lymph nodes and now we will talk something about the deep cervical lymph nodes the deep cervical lymph nodes receive all of the lymph from the head and neck either directly or indirectly via the superficial lymph nodes so they are uh, the deep cervical lymph nodes receives all the lymphs from the head and neck either through direct by lymphatic vessels that pass directly from some areas of the head and neck directly to the superior deep cervical lymph nodes or to the deep cervical lymph nodes or indirectly through lymphatic vessels that pass to the superficial lymphatic lymph nodes and from this superficial lymph, lymph nodes the efferent vessels will pass to the deep cervical lymph nodes the deep cervical lymph nodes are organized in a vertical chain in a vertical chain silsila amudia located within close proximity to the internal jugular vein 
within the carotid sheath. So the deep cervical lymph nodes are represents are one of the contents of the carotid sheath actually. They are within with close proximity to the internal jugular vein. The efferent vessels from the deep cervical lymph nodes converge to form the jugular lymphatic trunks. كل ال efferent lymphatic vessels اللي تطلع لنا that leave the deep cervical lymph nodes they unite with each other converge which means that يتحدون to each other و they form a trunk جدوء من ال lymphatic vessels this trunk is called jugular lymphatic trunks what are these jugular lymphatic trunks it's a big lymphatic uh, vessels that collect that the main uh, vessel that collect the lymph from the all the efferent vessels from the deep cervical nerves unite with each other to form a trunk single trunk taking the lymph from head and neck to this trunk so this uh, trunks that forms on the right side of the head and neck and on the left are called the jugular lymphatic trunks the deep cervical nodes can be divided into superior and inferior deep cervical lymph nodes you see in this picture to show you this is the internal jugular vein of course it is the common correct artery here and the vagus nerve which is not shown in this picture in a close proximity of the internal jugular vein, we have these lymph nodes, these deep cervical lymph nodes. See, deep cervical lymph nodes. Actually, these deep, deep cervical lymph nodes divided into two parts or two groups. The first group here, we have upper deep cervical lymph nodes, yani from this area to this area, is called upper deep cervical lymph nodes. And from here to here, these are called the lower deep cervical lymph nodes and you see of course these are the lymphatic vessels these are lymphatic vessels they are taking the uh, lymph from the tissue here from the tongue and part of here to the submandibular nodes and from submandibular nodes lymph nodes these efferent these efferent and this efferent lymph node pass lymphatic vessels pass to the deep cervical lymph nodes see all these things these lymphatics see these all these are efferent uh, lymphatic vessels pass to the deep cervical lymph nodes and as we said here we have the upper deep cervical lymph nodes and we have the lower deep cervical lymph nodes They are numerous in number. The deep cervical lymph nodes are numerous, but include the pre-laryngeal, which is in the front or anterior to the larynx, the pre-tracheal, front of the trachea, the retropharyngeal behind the pharynx, the infrahyoid below the hyoid bone, the jugulodigastric which is also called the tonsillar jugulodigastric lymph nodes اللي هي ايضا يسموها tonsillar the jugulohomohyoid and the supraclavicular lymph nodes these are actually the deep cervical lymph nodes and they are many there are many lymph nodes different from person to person it's count now you see this other picture show you the retropharyngeal. This is the retropharyngeal lymph nodes. This is the posterior aspect of the 
the pharynx this is the muscle of the pharynx this is the severe constrictor and middle constrictor post inferior constrictor this is the carotid sheath uh, this is the, the left carotid sheath the right carotid sheath okay uh, so this lymph nodes behind posterior to the pharynx is called the retropharyngeal lymph nodes which is drained to you see this is this is the afferent and this is the efferent this is the efferent the efferent which is drained to the deep cervical lymph nodes these are the deep cervical lymph nodes in a close proximity of the internal jugular vein of course this is the vagus nerve and this is the common carotid artery which is here clear and here and this is the median pharyngeal raphe the site of insertion of the superior middle and inferior constrictor muscles of the pharynx okay now the pre-laryngeal and pre-tracheal lymph nodes the pre-laryngeal and pre-tracheal nodes lie deep to the investing fascia lie deep to the first layer of the deep cervical fascia which is called the investing fascia the pre-laryngeal nodes on the cricothyroid membrane and the pre-tracheal in front of the trachea below the isthmus of the thyroid gland below the isthmus you know the thyroid gland الغدة الدرقية is composed of two lobes right and left lobe and it's on the uh, it's situated on the in the carot in the thyroid cartilage of the larynx cartilage of the larynx and these two lobes right and left are connected to each other by small narrow thyroid tissue which is called the isthmus this is in front of the trachea and uh, below this isthmus below this tissue that connect the right and left lobe we have the some of the pre-tracheal uh, lymph nodes below the isthmus the paratracheal lymph nodes para means hawl paratracheal mean on the right on the left behind which is called paratracheal lymph nodes the paratracheal lymph nodes lie on the sides of the trachea and oesophagus along the recurrent laryngeal nerve along the recurrent laryngeal nerve and as you know the recurrent laryngeal nerve which is also called the inferior laryngeal nerve which is a branch of the vagus nerve cranial nerve number 10 that supply motor supply uh, to the uh, uh, muscles of the larynx so along this recurrent laryngeal nerve we have the paratracheal lymph nodes they receive lymph from the esophagus the trachea and the larynx so the paratracheal lymph nodes receives lymphatic uh, drainage from the esophagus the trachea and the larynx in case of CA larynx, Saratan al Hunjara, or in case of CA Sagas, Saratan al Mri, Kadian Tesharhad al Marat al Saratan, Yani Yahruj bin Hadi al Aba, Yahruj bin Sagas, Wa Yentakil Ila Yani Yentesher, Haraj al Mantak al Saba, Fa Awal Mantaka. ينتشر إلى هذا السرطان هي الأوعية اللمفاوية المحيطة بالمرء إذا كان السرطان بالمرئ أو بالتريكية أو باللارينكس سرطان الحنجرة اللي هو شايع جدا عفوا نقط شايع جدا وإنما موجود آه هذه السرطانات عادة تجي متأخرة فينتقل أو ينتشر المرض تنتشر الخلايا السرطانية عن طريق الأوعية اللمفاوية إلى الباراتريكال ليف نود فنلاحظ أنه هذه الباراتريكال ليف نود تبتدي تتضخم ويزداد حجمه وعند إجراء العمليات طبعا هاي كله لازم تستأصل مع الأورام 
اللي ممكن استئصاله اذا كان مريض ممكن استئصال المرض ايضا نستأصل مع العقد اللمفاويه اللي هي تضخمت وانتقل الى المرض وانتقل الى الخلايا السرطانيه ذا اذر نيف نوت از ذا جيجلو دايجاستريك فروم اتس نيم جيجلو فروم ذا انترنال جيجلر زين دايجاستريك فروم دايجاستريك ماسل بوستير بيدي اوف دايجاستريك ماسل سو سو ذا جيجلو دايجاستريك lymph nodes which is the also called the upper deep which is part of the upper deep cervical lymph nodes it lies below the posterior belly of the gastric muscle between the ankle of the mandible and the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle which is the main node draining the tonsil احنا عادة هذول الأطفال إذا تلاحظون إنه تعرض دائما إلى التهاب اللوزتين فبعد مرور الزمن إذا تعرض تكررت الإصابات كثير يتحول إلى التهاب اللوزتين المزمن فنلاحظ إنه احنا بأعلى الرقبة تحت زاوية الفك عند عقدة لمفاوية تضخم العقدة اللمفاوية حتى عامة الناس من يشوفون انتفاخ بهاي المكان أو تورم بهاي المكان أو العقدة في هذا المكان يعني يعرفون أنه هذه سببها هو التهاب مزمن في اللوزتين فـ This Jugular Diagastric Leaf Node is drain mainly the palatine tonsil or the tonsil اللوزتين ومثل ما ذكرنا بحالة الالتهابات المزمنة عادة تكون هاي المضخمة وتنحس باليد اثناء الفحص. The other lymph nodes which is the lower deep cervical lymph node is the jugulohomohyoid lymph node and also from its name between the internal jugular vein and the homohyoid muscle. So the jugulohomohyoid lymph node, the lower deep cervical lymph nodes. It lies just above the intermediate tendon of the homohyoid muscle. You know the homohyoid muscles have superior and inferior belly and between the superior and inferior belly we have a tendon which is called intermediate tendon and of course as you know if you remember that the lower or the lower belly of the omohyoid muscle divide the posterior triangle of the neck into small supraclavicular and big occipital triangles So this tendon that connects between the superior and inferior uh, belly of omohyoid muscles, on this tendon, above this tendon, which is called also intermediate tendon of the white muscle, the jugular omohyoid muscle lie. And the cover of the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. يعني تكون مغطاة بالposterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. This lymph node, which is the main lymph node of the tongue. يعني واحد إذا عنده مثلا صار تعرض إلى أو خلي تمرض في مرض سرطان اللسان. من تنتقل الخلايا السرطانية من تنتشر خارج خارج اللسان أول مكان تصله عن طريق الأوعية اللمفاوية طبعا ممكن ينتقل عن طريق الدم أو عن طريق انتشار الموضع ضمن المكان نفسه لكن من المكانات اللي ينتشر عن طريق السرطان بشكل عام هو الأوعية اللمفاوية فأول عقدة لمفاوية أو أهم عقد لمفاوية تسحب لنا الخلايا السرطانية بالنسبة لللسان هي The jugular omohyoid lymph node. So it is the main lymph node of the tongue. Of course, not only the cancer and malignancy, but also in case of infection. In the case of 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 Along the uh, post, uh, behind uh, at the at the site of the 
انترميديت تندون uh, يعني تقريبا بالبدل بالبوستير تراينجل بيهايند اور بينيث ذا بوستير اوردر اوف ذا ستيرنو كيدو مايستويد مصر ذكرنا بانه الليمفاتيك فيزوس الافرنت ليمفاتيك فيزوس which leave the deep cervical lymph nodes they unite with each others to form a mean lymphatic vessel which is called the jugular lymph node uh, lymph trunk sorry so what's this jugular lymph trunk the jugular lymph trunk is a lymphatic vessel in the neck it is formed by vessels that emerge from the superior deep cervical lymph nodes and unite to efferent vessels of the inferior deep cervical lymph nodes so this trunk will collect all the lymph from the head and neck which reach the deep cervical lymph nodes and from these deep cervical lymph nodes in upper or lower these efferent vessels will unite together and form this main lymphatic vessel which is a big vessel and it's called the jugular lymph trunk still it's called it's called jugular because it is it is in a close relation with the internal jugular vein so it is called jugular lymph trunk of course this jugular lymph trunks we have two one on the right and one on the left on the right side this trunk ends ينتهي in the junction of the internal jugular vein and subclavian vein which is called the venous angle so in the right side this jugular lymphatic trunk or lymph trunk will open and ends in this venous angle that's to say between the junction between the internal jugular vein and the subclavian vein. This is on the right side. But on the left side, here the end of the jugular lymph trunk is different because on the left side it joins the thoracic duct. Here we have al anat al sadriya. This is also lymphatic duct. Carries the lymph but not from the head and neck. This thoracic duct carries the lymph from the collecting the lymphs lymph from the thorax from the abdomen and from the lower limbs and left upper limb I will repeat again that collect limbs from thorax abdomen lower limbs and left upper limb because the right will cause to the right trunk so i will repeat on the left side it joins the thoracic duct which drains into the systemic that means blood circulation at the junction of the left subclavian and internal jugular vein here in the right the lymphatic the jugular lymph trunk directly open on the venous angle between the between the internal jugular and the superior vein but the, on the left no the jugular trunk the jugular lymph trunk open in the thoracic trunk duct and this thoracic duct drains into the systemic circulation at the junction of the left subclavian and internal jugular vein at the commencement of the preclusifaric vein مع بداية تكوين البريكيوسيفاليك بيت and this picture will show you this is very uh, clear picture to show you yes this picture this is the superior vena cava this is the superior vena cava that drain blood from the upper extremities the upper limbs and head and neck all the blood drained here through this this is the internal jugular vein and this is the subclavian vein right subclavian vein that drain blood from the 
right upper lip. And of course, this is the left subclavian that drains blood from the left upper, upper lip. And this is the internal jugular vein. Uh, of course, this is the internal jugular vein which unites with the subclavian to form the cephalic vein. And this is the left of one, and this is the right placocephalic vein. Here in the right side, this is the right jugular trunk that collects all the lymph from the head and neck here in the right side. From the head and neck, and all of them are all the lymph will pass through the uh, to the deep cervical lymph nodes, and from the deep cervical lymph nodes. The efferent from the deep cervical lymph nodes, from the upper and deep and lower deep cervical lymph nodes, will collect to, to each other, and all these vessels will unite to each other to form single vessel, little single lymphatic vessels, which is called the right jugular trunk. The same thing in the left, left jugular trunk. So you know how this is formed. This this trunk. This big vessel, lymphatic vessels, is formed from the collection of all the efferent lymphatic vessels from the upper deep and lower deep cervical. They unite to each other to form single lymphatic trunk, which is called here in the right, right jugular trunk, and in the left, left jugular trunk. Here, the right jugular trunk will unite before it enters this uh, vein with a right subclavian trunk. Of course, this is the right subclavian trunk, also lymphatic trunk, that drain lymphs from the right upper lip. So it unites with this, with this uh, jugular trunk, and this main lymphatic trunk, which collects lymph from the head and neck and from the upper lip, will enter at the junction, which is called venous ankle. This is the venous ankle. It joins this uh, main uh, vein at this ankle, the junction between the internal jugular vein and subclavian, and this lymph will pass to the circulation, and from here, from subclavian it will pass to the heart, to the right atrium, and then it will mix with the circulation uh, main circulation of the uh, blood and of course from the right vent from the right vent uh, atrium to the right ventricle and then to the lung and we will discuss this is later on in the next lectures inshallah when we discuss the heart and the circulation in the right in the left side here the left jugular trunk also will unite with the left subclavian trunk that drain the lymph from the upper limb and they unite with the thoracic duct this is the thoracic duct this is the thoracic duct and here we unite the, with the thoracic duct not directly in the vein but with the thoracic duct so this thoracic duct you see is behind the internal jugular vein this thoracic duct ascends here this is ascent from the abdomen, from the lower limb, and this is within the thoracic cavity. Come on, this is the thoracic cavity at the Jupiter Sudri, and this is the trachea, طبعاً, and this is the esophagus uh, behind the trachea. This thoracic duct pass here to in the right side there is no thoracic duct, but in the left pass here behind the left brachiocephalic vein and ascend here in the Left supraclavicular area, or ascends in the neck, slightly in the neck, in the supraclavicular region, and then enter at the junction of the, in the the junction of the internal jugular vein with the left subclavian vein. Here, the thoracic duct open, and the left jugular trunk open in this thoracic duct. Thank you very much for your listening. And if there is any question, you can ask me on the classroom.